Good morning, you're welcome to The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. My name is Rume Paulson. It's Friday, the 22nd of November, 2024. Can you believe it? We have just 33 days until Christmas. And at this point, we might as well be counting down. Anyways, how are you doing today? It would interest you to know that today is go for a drive day. Yes, so whatever you're doing, just make sure you go for a drive, let your hair down and just enjoy yourself. It's the weekend. All right, on today's breakfast show, we're looking at several hot topics, one of which is Labour Party chieftains advocate age limits for public office holders. Another topic we'll be discussing much later in the show is KMO unveils airport marshals to boost airport standards and curb misconduct. We'll also be taking global stories that made it to the front pages of our national dailies, as well as some top trending stories. But first, let's check out our quote of the day. When you have confidence, you can have a lot of fun. And when you have fun, you can do amazing things. And that is according to Joe Namat. He's an American football quarterback. And he says this morning, when you have confidence, you can have a lot of fun. And when you have fun, you can do amazing things. So I think that is so apt. You know how they tell you that you need to find your purpose, right? If you're going to do something, I think it's um, the whole Chinese-Japanese thing that says ikigai, and you need to find your purpose. You need to find something that you love. And that's what Joe Namat is saying this morning. You know, when you're having fun, you can do lots of amazing things because you're not even thinking about the work. You're thinking about the fun that you're having. And of course, when you're doing these amazing things, your life can just be transformed. Your lives, your lives can be transformed into something else, something so amazing amazing so make sure that you're having fun and we're giving you this quote because it's friday thank god it's friday right so um don't go about sludging and um you know sitting in your couch and just binging on something you should go out and have fun do amazing things change the world because those amazing ideas definitely need to come out and they need to come from you all right, that's it for our quote of the day. We'll move over to our top trending stories. This first one says, Finnish police arrest Simon Ekpa over terrorism charges. Finnish Nigerian separatist uh, Simon Ekpa, alongside four others, was arrested on allegations of incitement to violence and terrorism financing. Finnish authorities revealed Ekpa's use of social media to coordinate violent actions in Nigeria's southeast region. Charges include public incitement to commit crimes with terrorist intent and fundraising for terrorism with two suspects linked to Hellskin. In the case involved international cooperation with court hearings scheduled in Finland for the ongoing investigation. So this obviously is a developing story. And, um, you know, with Simon Ekpa, I think there's something that we've always talked about. Of course, this is um, in relations to IPOB and um, the Biafran nation. Um, but I think at the end of the day, if it's terrorism, terrorism is terrorism, and it shouldn't it shouldn't just be swept under the carpet. I love the fact that you know the Finnish authorities are obviously um, taking charge in it because he is a Finnish Nigerian born um, um, person, and I think he's even held offices as well over there. But you cannot be inciting violence, you cannot be inciting terrorism in Nigeria, and we hear of the things that happen in Nigeria. We, in fact, we hear of people who are in high offices, people who wield power. The, that are also being um, that are also being involved in things like this. In fact, some of them are funding things like this. And of course, we're seeing that with this story with Simon Ekpa, who is you know doing fundraising, who is inciting through social media. And we know how social media is such a powerful tool right now. And most times, whatever is happening on social media, people want to get involved. People want to believe it. People just feel like yes, that's reality. But when it comes to violence, it's a no-no. When it comes to terrorism, it's a no-no. I understand if you feel like maybe your people are being marginalized, but there are different ways to go about it. And while we're Nigeria, while we try to separate um, Nigeria, while we try to fight each other, we can see what's happening in the east, in the um, south southeastern part of Nigeria, and where they have to, you know, have the sit at home, where people are being killed on a daily. It's quite sad and quite unfortunate that there are several people 
you know, who are there that are inciting this violence? Like I said, this is a developing story. Of course, um, a lot of investigation is going to be done, and we know how it is. You are not guilty until, um, you know, you're, you're tried, and, you know, the jury says, yes, you're guilty. So you're not guilty as charged if we're still doing the investigation. But, of course, I'm sure there are people like this, you know. There are people who are online. There are people who are offline as well who are just, um, funding terrorism, funding violence, and not just even in the southeastern part of Nigeria. Of course, we know what's happening in, the, in northern Nigeria as well, which is quite sad because you're seeing people who cannot go to their farms. You're seeing people who are scared that bandits are going to come, raid their towns, kill their people, um, you know, take all of their belongings. At this point, we really, really need to, um, you know, look into our security apparatus. And I, with that, th little things like this, when we just get a little information, of course, the, the, the security agencies in Nigeria need to move quickly, have swift action on that, just like what the Finnish um, you know, authorities are doing, and they've been investigating for a couple of years now. So if we're seeing people who are just making such moves, um, such terrible, bad moves, especially when it comes to, when it threatens the security of Nigeria and, Niger and the Nigerian people, the citizens of Nigeria at large, we definitely need to close in on them because we have to nip it in the bud. Ter terrorism has become the order of the day, violence, kidnapping, banditry. It just seems like that's something we keep talking about year in, year out, day in, day out. And we cannot have that. Nigeria is, I'm sure Nigerians want peace. Nigeria is, Nigerians are, you know, resilient people. They are amazing people. They are smart people. They are full of so many good things. They have so many great opportunities and ideas. And of course, that's what we want to be promoting, not violence. So anyone who's promoting violence at this point, we need to close in on them, make sure that they're they being brought to justice. All right, another top trending story this morning says ex-presidential candidate Sarah Jibril condemns immorality acts among leaders. Dr. Sarah Jibril criticized homosexuality and lesbianism among Nigeria's elite leaders, urging a return to ethical leadership values during Nigeria's Pride Award in Abuja. She launched a moral um, reform campaign to address declining values in governance while honoring individuals promoting positive change. Borneo Governor Zolom, recognized for his recovery efforts post Boko Haram insurgency, emphasized the state's steady progress towards rebuilding and security improvements. National Orientation Agency's um, Director General stressed that leadership grounded in integrity fosters trust and inspires followership. Of course, as a leader, you definitely need to put yourself on a pedestal. And because you know that there are people looking at you, looking up to you, there are people who are going to follow you, and they need to trust your values. They need to trust, you know, where you're taking them to. You cannot just act in an immoral way. And, of, and we hear of this, you know, all the time. We hear of what all these big men and big women and people who are in leadership, they're doing because, of course, they wield power and they feel like because I have the power, I have the money, I have the control, I can do whatever I want to do, I can do, and basically undo. And that shouldn't be the case because as a leader, you need to be filled with so much values. We cannot have you up there and you're trying to control people, you're living lives that are immoral, and of course, you're spending public funds to, to you know, to fund that lifestyle, that immoral lifestyle. And of course, I love what um, Dr. Sarah has said, you know, lesbianism, homosexuality, let's even start with the fact that it is a criminal offense in Nigeria. So you cannot do certain things. Your sexuality, maybe in other parts of the world, um, that can fly. You can say, oh, this is how I was made. This is how God created me. We get that. But in Nigeria, it still stays the same. You cannot be gay. You cannot be a lesbian or um, you cannot be homosexual and, you know, flaunt it and you think that's all right. And of course, these are the leaders who have probably put it in the constitution, put it in the law. So they cannot be doing the same thing as well because you're supposed to lead by example because you're people who are following you. And just like, you know, what uh, he has said as well, um, it, fo it, it fosters trust and followership. If you want people to trust you, if you want people to follow you, if you want people to think of, of you know, great ideas that can work harmoniously for the nation, then you have to lead by example.
and you need to live good, great lives that we can be proud of and say, yes, that's our leader. We know what he's doing. We agree with his values. We agree with his terms and we'll follow um, him or her whichever way because we know that they stand for something that is good. And I think I would also just love to add, you know, aside having those values, integrity is also a major thing. Accountability, transparency. These are the things that we expect from our leaders, especially if we're going to, you know, transform Nigeria into the kind of country that we want. We need to have these type of leaders that possess these qualities, possess these values, because that's the only way we can all work together. And we know that we're going somewhere, not just dilly-dallying along and and not knowing where we're going to in local parlance or our locust land, carry me, they go where I don't know. So it's important that our leaders are people with integrity, they're people who have values, and they show it. They show it. All right, another top trending story says NSC partners with firms to enhance food security and empower youth. The Nigerian Society of Engineers, NSC, signed MOUs with two agropreneur firms, Integrated Lancaster Farms and Assetarized Limited, to establish demonstration farms nationwide. This initiative aligns with NSC's agenda to boost agriculture, tackle food insecurity, and generate job opportunities for Nigerians. Asset Rice plans to empower 1,500 graduates through an incubation hub, cultivating one hectare per student while expanding yam production across Nigeria. Integrated Lancaster Farms aims to reduce youth unemployment and enhance agricultural development through initiative practices and strategic partnerships. That is such uh, great news, and that's what we love to hear. That's what we want to hear. We want a situation whereby, you know, job insecurity would just be a thing of the past. 70% of, you know, our population are made of the youths, and we are a country of over 200 million people, so you know what the number is. And most of those youths do not have jobs. Most of them have gone to school, and they've done their own part, they've studied so hard, and they come up with their certificates, but there is nothing to show for it. Compared to, you know, the 1970s, 1980s, whereby you go to school, you come out, there is a job waiting for you. But this is our current reality in Nigeria. Youths are going to school, they are even getting as high as um, masters or PhD, um, you know, certificates. But then jobs are just not coming for as we expect that. So when we see initiatives like this that can just ensure that there are job opportunities, that is something to commend. One thousand five hundred um, from one of the from one of the companies, amazing. And I think what the NSC is doing is such a great initiative, and that's what we want the government to do. We want the government to be able to provide jobs for people. A lot of um, manufacturing companies, of course, have left Nigeria, and that has created a, a hole when it comes to the job um, you know, opportunities in Nigeria. But if we can ensure that we have a business environment that is thriving, and when companies come, they want to stay because they see value in it, what is going to happen? They are going to hire as many people to do the job because, of course, they cannot do it by themselves. Or um, you know, having to bring those expertise to come in is only so much. There are only so many expertise that can come in. So they're obviously going to hire the people who are here, the locals um, here to do the job. And that's what we need. So we need to start to create industries. We need to ensure that, you know, foreign investors that are coming, they're coming in with a, with a mind to stay because the business environment is favorable to them. We need to find other ways to ensure that vocational skills you know, are there for people. So even if you did not go to school, um, that's the normal traditional four walls of, of a university, you can still learn a vocation and still have a good life whereby you are able to put food on your table for yourselves and your family and you're financially independent. So it shouldn't just be about university, but everyone should be able to have a job in Nigeria, especially if you are of age and you know, you're, you're ready to provide for yourself and your family. So the government needs to you know, ride on this wave now that the NSC has started, which is the initiative um, to ensure that they're providing job opportunities when it comes to agriculture. And we know what food insecurity has been um, lately, which has even led to inflation as well when it comes to food. So having to ensure that people are growing their own food in Nigeria 
is such a great thing. I know that there's the whole insecurity thing in the north, um, the northern part of Nigeria, but with things like this, if other people can spring up and have initiatives like this, we would just be able to grow our own food and we don't have to start um, to import so many food items into Nigeria. So kudos to the NSC for what they are doing. Kudos to um, these companies, these agricultural companies that have started this and are looking to, um, you know, just ensure that people are getting jobs and people are learning something, which is great. So hopefully more will spring up and the government will definitely ride on this wave and do more. All right, our final top trending story says reps move to end HND degree dichotomy Others' challenges. Um, the House of Representatives is pushing to end a long standing disparity between HND and degree qualifications in employment. Honorable Fouad Laguda highlighted proposed bills to strengthen polytechnics and enhance technical expertise for national development. Federal Polytechnics Shedam and Wanune, established in 2021, face operational challenges, including low student enrollment and resource utilization. The committee demanded a curate's report on budget use and project execution, emphasizing transparency and actionable solutions for in institutional growth. So, um, like we know, there's always been that whole debacle between, um, you know, a university that's if you go to uh, a proper university or a polytechnic. Now, most times people feel oh, polytechnic is quite low, it's just an HND. Um, meanwhile, the university, of course, your status is higher. But at the end of the day, when it comes to employment, I don't even think we should be looking. It's good to look at the certificates because we want to be sure that you went to a university or you went to a higher um, institution and you've been able to learn all the things that, or you've been given the tools rather um, for the job that you want to get. But it shouldn't always be like that. For instance, in the UK, I know that you can probably work at a job, have so many experience. In fact, they look at your experience way more than the certificate that you have. But sadly, in Nigeria, most times we value the certificate. So even if the person can do the job or not, just because they come and they wave this fancy certificate, you feel like, oh, yes, they are qualified, but not necessarily. Can they do the job? should be the question and i'm sure there are ways to you know find that out maybe put them on probation see what they are capable of and then you can tell but if you're already sending them out from the door because they do not have um you know the university certificate that you're looking for then that's quite sad and unfortunate and of course now we can see that it's affecting this polytechnics like for instance one in, in um Bainue state people are not enrolling as much because they feel like if I even enroll here or if I come to this, uni to this polytechnic, how am I sure I'm going to get a good job? Because, of course, there's going to be that dichotomy whereby people feel that my certificate doesn't meet standards, and it should. So I love the fact that, you know, the reps are talking about this. Let's ensure that it's not even just about the certificate. It is way more than the certificate. So the certificate is good, but it's important that you know the job, you have the tools required, you have the experience, and you can do it to the best of your abilities. So that's what it should be. That's what we should be driving at, not just a certificate. And of course, you know, this even goes into um, the whole vocational um, part as well. So being able to say, I want to be a plumber, and there's nothing wrong with that. I want to be a plumber. I want to be the best plumber in the world, the best plumber in Nigeria has ever seen, and even create a standard business from that. I want to be a carpenter, and I'm making furniture for so many people, but you're not even just doing it on the low level. You're not doing it at a very small scale. You start from where you are and build it up into something um, big and extraordinary. Build a conglomerate from it. It is possible it happens so it's not just about the traditional education of course you should be able to you know go there because school is not even only about the certificate most times it's about meeting other people it's about gaining knowledge it's about relationship skills it's so many things than the actual certificate having to read cram and write again at the at the examination no it's way more than that you're learning other things picking up other things along the way and that's how it should be so um wherever you are it's important that you get good education 
And we hope that in Nigeria, we would not have that disparity, especially when it comes to um, HND, HND holders and BSC holders as well. So kudos to the reps for thinking on this one. All right, that's it for our top training stories. We'll go on a short break. We'll look at the weather. And when we return, we'll be reviewing the papers. Please stay with us.